Praise and glory be to the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's such a joy to come into the presence of God, to worship the Lord, to thank Him for all the goodness that we have received from Him. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank You and praise You. We come before Your throne of grace. We have come to worship You. Now Your Word says, we should worship You in the beauty of holiness. Cleanse us, O Lord. Take away all those things that separate us from you. Give us the grace to worship you in spirit and truth. Lord, you are so great, so awesome, so wonderful. You are the king of all the earth. Yet, you love to come and speak to us. You love to guide us, to counsel us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are mindful of us. We give this time our worship and the word into your precious hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we first worship the Lord? After which we will listen to the word of God. Praise the Lord. It is my joy and honor to welcome you all to another Sunday service. God has been good to us this week. He has let us see another new day. He has been graceful. He has been faithful to our families. He has led us in amazing ways. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. How can a name be a tower? Let me tell you, the name of Jesus is above every other name. And when a Christian invokes the name of Jesus, all burdens start to get loose. All hindrances start to be moved. All the walls of Jericho start to tumble down. All the waters of Jordan start to stop. The name of God, the name of Jesus is our refuge. The name of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower. The name of the Lord is a refuge for my soul the name of the lord is a pillar i can lean on the righteous run into the name of the lord the righteous run into the name of the lord the name of the lord is a strong and mighty tower the name of the Lord is a refuge for my soul. The name of the Lord is a pillar I can lean on. The righteous run into the name of the Lord. The righteous run into the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower. The name of the Lord is a refuge for my soul. The name of the Lord is a pillar I can lean on. The righteous run into the name of the Lord. The righteous run into the name. Of the Lord. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still deep in sin, the Son of God came down in the form of man and He died for our sins. He picked us up from the mighty clay that we were in. We could not get out on our own. We tried our level best, but we still were sinners. But through the sacrifice on the cross, He made us His own. He made us righteous in His sight. No longer are we sinners, for we are saints in His eyes. Let us sing this song, because God is our rock. He is our refuge. He is our fortress. And He is our strong foundation. He who trusts in Him will not be moved. Yes, let us sing this song with joy. 
Pick me up from the miry clay Put me on the rock to stay Pick me up from the miry clay Put me on the rock to stay When my life was in a mess I thought there's no way out and Then I cried on Jesus' name He gave me a brand new start When my life was in a mess I thought there's no way out Then I cried on Jesus' name He gave me a brand new start He is the rock He is the rock Jesus is the rock on whom I stand From the miry clay Put me on the rock to stay Pick me up from the miry clay Put me on the rock to stay When my life was in a mess I thought there's no way out Then I cried out Jesus' name He gave me a brand new star When my life was in a mess I thought there's no way out Then I cried out Jesus' name And He gave me a brand new start He is the rock He is the rock Jesus is the rock on whom I stand great God. We serve an awesome God. He created the heavens and the earth with just a word. He created me and you with just a word. He gave us his living breath and he made us his sons and daughters. If our God is such a great God, then we need not fear for anything in this life. Because such a God, such a great and awesome God, rushes to our aid when we call upon His name. We serve a great God, but we also serve a very loving and affectionate Father. He is there for us. If He's able to save Shatrach, Meshach and Abednego from the furnace, if He's able to save Daniel from the lion's den, if He's able to save Esther and Mordecai from total annihilation, then He's able to save you and me. Because if there's one thing I know, my God is alive, my God still moves, and my God still does great and awesome things in this world. So sing with me, how great is my God. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice. All the earth rejoices. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to 
hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great how great is our God Age to age He stands And time is in His hands Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The God had three in one Father, the Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God You're the name above all names You are worthy of our praise and my heart will sing how great is our God You're the name above all names You are worthy of our praise And my heart will sing how great is our God one last time. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great. Our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our attention to the Word of God. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight reads like this, and God is able to give you more than you need so that you will always have all you need for yourselves and more than enough for every good cause. As we continue to study this verse, we are able to realize that God is able to meet all our needs and in fact, he can lead us to a place of overflowing abundance in every area of our life. But it is very, very important that we are careful about the whole thing because we can lose it. Many people who received the abundance of God, who enjoyed all that God gave them, lost it because of a little carelessness. We need God's grace to be able to maintain the abundant blessings that God bestows on our lives. Today we will read about a king named Uzziah in the Bible. His other name was Azariah, which means God helps. 
But the name Uzziah means God is my strength. Help is one thing, strength is another. Only when we can't do something, we ask for help. But strength without which we can't do anything. So here's a man whose name said, God is my strength. And he was dependent on God. Many times in our own lives, we keep God as our help. We go to him only when we are not able to do things by ourselves. But God should be our strength, which means that without him, we will not do anything. Now, 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 1, we read like this, All the people of Judah chose Amaziah's 16-year-old son, Uzziah, to succeed his father as king. At 16 years of age, Uzziah becomes an heir to the throne in place of his father. 2 Chronicles 26, 8 says like this, The Ammonites paid tribute to Uzziah and he became so powerful that his fame spread even to Egypt. Now here's a man who has God as his strength. And because of that, God blessed him in everything. Everything was in abundance. Many times we sing about it. But in reality, we have so many other things as strengths. Let us look at a few questions. The first is, who or what is my strength? Some people, money is their strength. For some people, they have contacts. For some people, they say their identity. You know, most often, their profession is reflected by stickers on their vehicles. But is that a true strength? David, the great warrior, the man who overcame Goliath, he says like this, Psalms 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom will I be afraid? David was a man who went through so much in life. He was a talented man in so many ways. He was a warrior. And he had so much of credit to what he had done or achieved in life. Yet he says, the Lord is the strength of my life. And so we see that he was blessed, blessed beyond measure. Now this man, Ozia, he had another very important characteristic. God was his strength, so God blessed him. And the second thing we read about him is that 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 4, following the example of his father, he did what was pleasing to the Lord. Now we need to check ourselves. Are we doing things that please the Lord? Or do we choose to do things that pleases us? Now, several times, you know, certain habits, certain friendship, certain things that we do, we know it does not please God. But we continue to do that because it pleases us. Now, we need to really check and see what are those things that pleases God and we need to do it and do it alone. Now, Uzziah, this king, the first thing is he had God as his strength. And the second thing is this man knew how to please God. He followed his father who pleased God in everything. And the third thing about Uzziah is that he had a very good counselor. Second Chronicles 26 verse 5, we read like this. Uzziah kept on seeking God during the lifetime of Zechariah, who taught him how to fear God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosperous. Now this is amazing, amazing. Now this man had someone who was wise as his counselor. 
and as a result of which Uziah always took the right decisions. Now it is very, very important that we have someone like that in our life. Now there are a lot of young people with a lot of talent, with a lot of expectation to do great things. But you know, they lack mentors. Mentors or counselors are two different people. But then we need at least one of them in our lives so that they can help us to actually fulfill the purpose of God in our lives. Now, I want to give you two examples. One, the benefit of having a good counselor. Two, the trouble with having a wrong counselor. Naaman was a Syrian army officer who was suffering from leprosy. He went to the prophet Elisha seeking healing. Now this man of God was truly a man of God. When Naaman came to his house, he refused to even come out and see him. Instead he said, ask him to go to Jordan and dip himself seven times in the river. Now Naaman was so angry at the words he heard and he almost decided, now let's get back. There's no point. There are so many rivers in my own place. Why would I want to come here to River Jordan? And just as he was about to go back, one of his servants spoke to him like this. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 13. My father, it is a great word the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? Has he actually said to you, wash and be clean? Now what does this mean? The servant said, it's not a very difficult thing that the prophet has asked you to do. If he had told you to do something very complicated, you would have done it. But this is very simple. Dear people of God, salvation is also simple for us. Because the hard and the complicated part, Jesus accomplished for us. We need to believe. We need to obey. And finally, Naaman thought, let me go. And when he dipped himself seven times in River Jordan, his flesh became like that of a little child. Praise God. Now he had a good counsel as a result of which he went back to his place healed. Now the second person I want to point out is a man named Amnon. Amnon is a son of David and Amnon had a very wrong desire for his stepsister. But knowing that it is not right deep inside, he was helpless. He didn't know what to do. And at that time, he consulted with his friend, a worthless friend named Jonadab. And this guy gave him a very wrong advice, counsel, as a result of which Amnon ended up raping his half-sister. Now who are your counselors? This is very, very important. We need to ask God, Lord, I need a good counselor. I need a person who will counsel me, who will tell me what is right and what is wrong, which way to take. If you don't have a good counselor, pray for one. Ask God. He's a God who answers prayers. And today there are a lot of young people struggling, not knowing what to do. Deep inside their hearts, they know that it is not right. Yet, for the lack of counsel, they go the wrong path and suffer the consequences. Now coming back to Uzziah, because he had God as his strength, because he lived a life that pleased God, and because he had a good counselor, Uzziah 
increased in power and fame. Listen to some of his achievements. Second Chronicles 26.7 God helped him defeat the Philistines, the Arabs living at Gurba, and the Munites. Second Chronicles 26.9 Uzziah strengthened the fortifications of Jerusalem by building towers at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and where the wall turned. 2 Chronicles 26, 11. He had a large army ready for battle. Its records were kept by his secretaries, Jael and Masse, under the supervision of Hananiah, a member of the king's staff. 2 Chronicles 26, 15. In Jerusalem, his inventors made equipment for shooting arrows and for throwing large stones from the towers and corners of the city wall. His fame spread everywhere and he became very powerful because of the help he received from God. Now, these are wonderful achievements for a very young man. He had such a vast army and look at the automation that he has done those days. So, Uzziah's fame spread far and wide and he reigned as a king for 52 long years. Now, literally, Uzziah was enjoying the abundance. He was enjoying the abundance because he had God as his strength and he lived a life that pleased God and he had a wonderful counselor to guide him in every aspect of his life. But over the years, as he became more and more famous and more and more strong, Listen to what happened to his life. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 16. And when he had become powerful, he also became proud, which led to his downfall. He sinned against the Lord his God by entering the sanctuary of the Lord's temple and personally burning incense on the incense altar. Now this man who always wanted to please God, here he arrogantly enters the temple and he is burning incense in the incense altar which is supposed to be done only by the priests and not by the king. Now look at how pride came into this man and when pride comes in, along with pride comes destruction. Now this is one particular character that we all need to be watching out for. Many people on the, on the outside, the way they speak, the way they carry themselves, you tend to think that they are the humblest of all. But deep inside, there will be a great pride that is hiding. This is something that no one is an exemption. We need to constantly Check ourselves if we have let pride rule our lives. Now, Uzziah, he did not take pride in his equipment, in his army, in the way he did Jerusalem fortified and all that stuff. But his pride was revealed in the fact that he entered the temple of God and he chose to do things that he was not supposed to do. Now when he did that, God's anger burned against Uzziah. Now pride, we should look at the origin of it. Lucifer was the first who exhibited pride as a result of which he was thrown down from heaven. Many people think that God is not mindful of all these things. God is with me. But you need to check if there's pride in your life. You need to correct yourself. Now 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verses 18 and 19, we read like this. They said, Uzziah, you have no right to burn incense to the Lord. Only the priests who are descended from Aaron have been consecrated to do this. Leave this holy place. You have offended the Lord God. And you no longer have his blessing. Uzziah was standing there in the temple beside the incense altar and was holding an incense burner. He became angry with the priests. Now here, when his fault is pointed out, 
even then Uzziah is not prepared to accept it. Now if someone points out a fault in our life, are we willing to accept it and change it? Uzziah, instead of humbling himself and saying I made a mistake, he was angry. He was wild with the priests. But look at what happened. Verse 19, Uzziah was standing there in the temple beside the incense altar and was holding an incense burner. He became angry with the priests and immediately a dreaded skin disease broke out on his forehead. Now he's stuck with leprosy. And a leprous person cannot enter the temple. Not only the temple, he cannot be the common people. He has to be isolated out of the camp and see what God does to a person who is proud. His pride led to his downfall. So how do we avoid pride? Because if pride will come, it will throw us out from the place of abundance, the place where God wants us to be. The first thing is how to overcome pride. Consciously acknowledge God for all your victories. Give credit to God alone. I have a wonderful friend. He is a very systematic and a wonderful person. Under his leadership, an institution which was almost dead and gone was revived and became one of the finest institutions. Pan India. But this gentleman, when he speaks about his achievements, about this thing, and immediately he'll correct himself and say, no, 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 nothing about me. It's all about God. God Almighty did this for us. And every report he sends, he would mention it. Praise be to the Almighty God. He helped us to do this. Now that is one very important thing that we should do. Consciously acknowledge God for all your blessings, for all your victories. Psalm chapter 18, verse 29, we read like this, With your help, I will run through an army. With help from my God, I leap over walls. Keep on glorifying God for everything we have, and there is no way pride can enter into our life. Second thing is, meditate on the greatness of God and the f uh, how frail we are as human beings. Sometimes we are so focused on our own life that we think are, that we are heroes. But when we look at the expanse, the universe, the sky, the stars, the mountains, the valleys, the seas, we can understand we are nothing but a speck in this world. When you look at the greatness, Psalm is beautifully says, Psalm chapter 8, verses 3 and 4, when I look at the heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you established, what is man that you take notice of him or the son of man that you pay attention to him? When the psalmist looked at all the creation of God, he is able to understand that God is so great, so big, so wonderful and he's just nothing. And how many of us can check our heart and understand how simple, how insignificant we are in comparison to the great universe, the planets that God has created. And the third thing is keep checking yourself at regular intervals. Now think about a vehicle we purchase, a car or a motorbike. At regular intervals, if it is not serviced, if it's not taken to the authorized dealer where he checks all the parameters and sets things right when things are not right, if we don't do that, it will lead to a breakdown. So also with our lives. We need to check our heart at regular intervals. The psalmist says, search me, O God. Search me, Lord. That should be our prayer. 
So while on one side it is God's will that he takes us to the place of abundance to bless us, we have the responsibility to be careful about how we live so that we can maintain or continue to enjoy the abundance of God in our lives. Three things I said, pride is one very important thing that comes to spoil the abundance, we can say. So the three things we do is constantly acknowledge God for all your victories. Meditate on the greatness of God and how frail man is. The third is search your heart at regular intervals to see if there is pride in you. Shall we pray? Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this wonderful time to meditate on your word. Father, thank you for all the blessings that we have received and enjoyed from you. You are a wonderful, beautiful, glorious God, King of kings and Lord of lords. But Father, there are things that come into our heart. A little bit of pride. A little bit of thinking too much about ourselves. Those little things over a period of time destroy the abundance that you want us to enjoy. Lord, we want to take some time to check our hearts, to humble ourselves in your presence so that we can continue to enjoy the abundance that you have in store for us. Lord, as your servant, I bless each and every person who is listening to this message. Lord, teach us to be humble. Let your name be magnified and glorified through our lives. Help us to understand that one day we all have to stand before your throne to give an account for all that we have received from you. Give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great